Well, welcome everyone. I am so excited. My name is Dr. Emma Shapiro, and I'm so excited. I'm losing my words here because I am here with the co-founder of Neuro Rehab VR, Neuro Rehab VR uh, Vina Somaretti, and she is going to blow your mind with how you can improve your patient outcomes and how you can also add virtual reality to your practice. Uh, Vina, welcome. I'm so happy to have you in this group. Thank you. Thank you for having me on here. This is amazing. <laughs> well, I, I'm one, I have to say, I, you, I'm just blown away at how astounding and how amazing neural rehab is, is doing. You guys are really Thank growing you. so quickly. And we have a lot of entrepreneurs here. And even though you are, um, you know, from the PhD background and not a clinical background, I would love to learn how it was getting started in this in this business because you were just a, a software developer you weren't really savvy with the business and i saw some youtube videos you had to pitch to people so tell us a little right. bit about like how this got created okay wow it's it's been a long journey and uh, a lot of learning so i how it started was i've always been interested in technology so that's been that i knew that i was going to do computer science like since when i was a kid and that's exactly what i did and i uh, came to the states in about 2012 to do my masters in game design and development and while i was working on it i was also working in the virtual reality lab uh and that's where we started to learn about vr and how to develop for vr so and i was always interested in being in healthcare but uh, but not be a doctor so that was kind of my <laughs> thing i didn't want to become a doctor but i wanted to use technology in some way so uh, so I just started to learn doing medical simulation and training. And then I was taking some, while I was doing my PhD, I also took some entrepreneurship classes uh, just in the school because I had some electives and I, I knew I was going to start a company. It was kind of like in the back of my head. It's going to happen someday. So I just kept, started to like learn about it, read books. Uh, but I should tell you that reading and just going to classes is very different from actually having a business. So I think I learned, been learning a lot. Uh, the last few years so that's kind of how it started and with this particular company it was my co-founder who can found me on indeed it, it was weird so he was like he has a clinic he started the clinic because his son had a brain injury about five years ago and he wanted to help him and help others so that's when he started the clinic we have robotic systems and a lot of other technology he wanted to add vr we found we, we spoke to each other and i was like this is perfect this seems like a really good segue to what I, you know, I can start a company and something that I can, I really, the technology I like and I can help people with on the medical side. So that's kind of how it started. I know, isn't it crazy? Like, like the more I get into running this business and it's a huge learning curve, it's so different. Like you can read books and, and, right. and that, but nothing is, is better than just diving in and getting your feet wet. Um, exactly. Now, I read a little bit about how, how you've spoken about how important mentorship is. Could mm -hmm. you speak to just, you know, a couple of maybe mentors that have really helped you or what advice has really helped you? Oh, definitely. So, I mean, it's really great to have people on your side who have been there, done it. They can give you very practical advice. Other, and you should also be careful about our people who want to give you advice and take it with a grain of salt. And I think by now, I've kind of found those people uh, who are helping us with the business. So my first mentor was actually in school. He, uh, uh, Brian Chambers from Capital Factory, he encouraged me to apply for the Big Idea competition in school. And I did, and I ended up winning it. And he's been kind of started that. I was like, okay, fine, I guess I can do this. This is not too bad. It was my first pitch. And then uh, since then, I've had a lot of input. Uh, and then we have a couple of board members who are really amazing. They help me think big. Because sometimes when you're in your company or just working on day-to-day -day things, they're like, you need to pull back from it, strategize what it's going to be 10 years from now, 15 years from now. Strategize yeah. what your business models will be. And as a person from the technical background, I'm always interested in that. And I like product. And But now I know how much sales and marketing and business is <laughs> so, so important when you're an entrepreneur. Yeah, it's you know, it's uh, marketing is where it's at. I mean, you can you right. can have a heart of gold, but if people don't know this amazing service or this amazing product you have, then it, it's it's all for it's all for nothing. They will not come if you, <laughs> you have to market. 
<laughs> my fiance tells me that all the time. He's like, Emma, you have to put yourself out there. You have to tell people what you're doing and you can just make all these amazing things in the background. No one's going to know. Right. Um, how was it pitching? Because we have, to give you a little um, reference, we have some therapists that have developed software or we have a lot of therapists actually that have asked questions about, you know, wanting to develop their own software. And okay. so how was it to, to pitch and how did you find funding as well? Okay. Yeah, with the pitching, it was mostly, you know, a lot of input before, I, in, before the first one, I think I practiced it about 15 times I had, I, I went and we could go to other mentors in the school too. So uh, I went to about 10 people, got feedback on my pitch deck. And that's what I've been doing since then. I, when I, it's evolved from the last, you know, two and a half years, like my pitch has evolved, but uh if you're obviously raising funding, pitching is very important. You should just learn how to pitch and you have to be able to tell your story in a very easy way that you know people can understand it without making it complicated, especially when it comes to our product having uh, you know, reference to neuroplasticity and physical therapy terms. We have to like bring it down to something that they can understand your pro- what the problem is really quickly and then what your solution is and then the market, your team, and uh, what's your traction? Traction is very important when you come in to go to investors. And then what was your bigger picture? Like, this is what you're doing now, but what's your vision for a future? So those are the few things that you would be great for, you know, the other entrepreneurs who are on the show. And uh, we'll have, I can also help you out if anybody wants to contact me. Oh, uh, that's so nice. I've done this a few times now. Uh, <laughs> So, we may, I may bring you back on just to talk about pitching because I know we sure. do have a couple people. Um, so you just want to like embody Steve Jobs, right? <laughs> I guess. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> and, and in the end, uh, don't be nervous about pitching because you know more about your product and what you're doing more than anybody else does. So go with that confidence mm-hmm. and that does help out a lot. Definitely. And when it comes to funding, we, it's been funded by a co-founder, uh, Bruce Conti, that's why I, I, you know, even though I pitch, we haven't been, we haven't really raised VC money because we have not tried to yet. Uh, we might in the future, but uh, that's been great. And we also have grant funding from NSF. Yeah, I think that's one, one of the nice things about maybe in healthcare is you're more apt to maybe get some grant funding and other research funding um, just because it's, it's a little bit more philanthropic. Now, did you run into any sort of unique challenges because you have a product in healthcare? Was there anything that you were to surprise, like surprising loopholes or surprising challenges that you had? Well, I can talk about challenges. For sure. <laughs> One is uh, the regulations in healthcare. It's always harder to get a healthcare product out than it is to get something about something else out in a different uh, industry because you have to make sure it's uh, FDA compliant and registered. So we are an FDA registered product. There was that and making sure the design controls and everything that needs to go that has been the biggest challenge for me, I guess. And that's something that I had to learn and get it done. And also healthcare is a little slower in adoption, but I think it's a VR at least is taking off now, so which is great. So those are things that I had to like learn and adapt to and make sure that it, it, this is for any startup. You, you need enough feedback from the people who are using your product because otherwise it's not going to work out. You can, me as an engineer, I can sit in my corner, code, and then, we're like, this is the best thing ever. And then <laughs> nobody might end up using it. <laughs> no, that's true. It, exactly. Like I, I, that's one of the things that I have to work on too, is like getting feedback and getting, getting, you know, how can I improve? Because you can constantly improve. Like anyone can, right. can improve all the time. And, and, you know, taking criticism, I'm sure you got a lot of criticism along the way. Did you, did you, Rena? We, we did, yeah, for the, which is good, is constructive criticism for the product at least, right? Because I tell them, tell me what you're actually thinking, don't think, and you're not going to hurt my feelings. Yeah. You know? So that's when you get the best kind of feedback. And we are fortunate enough that in the clinic, we get to see our patient therapists use it. So then we know what products are working better, which ones you know, they like better, and they're using more. And then what have, what, because our ther- therapists are really creative people. And they use it in different ways that we had never thought about. And then we can add those features in too. So that's, that's been really great. Well, I think, I think that's, that's like, uh, there's, there's this new, 
new sort of development in therapists working in like user interface and user design. Right. And, and I'd love to actually have you speak about that for a couple minutes here. Cause I know we have a lot of therapists that really want to actually get into that route. Mm -hmm. And, um, and so did you work with any therapists on sort of like the design and the different concepts? How was that? Yeah. So when it comes to user interface and the experience, uh, what we did first was it, we, we learned a lot. We, one, when it comes to our game, we do ask, what I usually do is, you know, this is an idea, what do you think about it? Or sometimes the ideas come from the therapist itself or the patient sometimes that has happened before and we have built things, uh, especially for a grocery shopping area, it was a patient's idea. They're like, I want to be able to go grocery shop with my grandparents, yeah. you know, the like grandkids again, and we built it. So we get that feedback. I kind of design the whole application and go, go back to the therapist and ask, these are the features we want to add. Do you think these are useful for you? These are the data collection we're going to do. Uh, is that something that would, you would be interested in? And then we build it out. And as we build it out, they keep testing it. It starts with the therapist first. And then when you know it's at a certain point where a patient can use it, then we uh, turn it over to the patients, uh, uh, testing it out and telling us what they feel. And when it came to the user experience, we understood that Setup time is very important for yes. therapists. Yeah, they should. We have come at this. You know, in the end, we came came down to select the patient, press play. Yes. Uh, previously, we had login, and everybody used to uh, kind of forget their passwords. <laughs> so we're still keeping it HIPAA compliant. We were able to uh, get through that. You can select the patient, and then. Uh, just crawl and find the application that you want to do. We have videos inside it too. So you can either watch a tutorial video or you can just play. It gives you a little description of what the each game is used for. So all of that, that, that didn't happen on day one. That happened through many iterations. No, that's so, I, I mean, when I appreciate that, it's, Time is so valuable as, well, for anyone, but as a therapist, I mean, my biggest gripe, like when I'm, I have like a standing frame, it, it helps people stand up if they mm -hmm. have, you know, lower extremity weaknesses. And it's so, it, the standing frame that we have, it takes such a long time to set up. There are all these straps and, and it's really, really challenging. And, and it's not ergonomically set up for me. So I'm in these oh, crouched right. positions and all the time I'm going they never asked a therapist how to do this. They never, I don't think they ever put someone in this standing frame right. themselves right. to understand the, the, you know, the, the repetitive nature of it and how, how that is. So exactly. I think, yeah, it's and all about speed and efficiency. I know. So the thing is we could have added six more sensors to our uh, headset and more sensors to get you more accurate measurements on your data for body movements, but then realize therapists won't have the time to actually put all of these centers on a patient. So we just brought it down to a headset and controllers. Nice. I, I, and I, I think, you know, you could always have some extras for those rare therapists because I know there's, I worked with a, a sports therapist and he right. loved putting sensors all over people's bodies. He had like right. 42 sensors, every single muscle and, and all of that. So I think it's like, there's certain people you have to, you almost have to like, figure out how do you best serve like 90% exactly. and then eventually serve that other 10%. Right. We do that, you know, the extra sensors until we do it for our research clients where they're interested in the data more than, you know, therapists are still interested in the data, but also efficiency. So there's that. Yes. There. Yeah. Yes. They're like, I need enough data to bill and to get reimbursed for, for my therapy, but not exactly. for everything else. That, that's so awesome. Well, do you want to go into a little bit about how virtual reality has changed some of these clinics and how clinics are using uh, your system? Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah, so adding VR to your clinic, we've seen, we've seen so many different changes for the therapist and also for the patients. So coming to therapist, uh, you have a new tool that you can use instead of uh, like a, a foam or, you know, like a poster ball, you have something much, much, much cooler. And uh, as each therapist, what I do first is I tell the therapist to play all the exercises that are on there and then they, they will know exactly which patient. Uh, would work best. So that's been the best way of doing things. So with having this new tool, when therapists kind of uh, maybe hit a dead end to what to do with a patient, maybe that increase their intensity or, you know, work on a certain function and they're not able to and the patient's not progressing, it's a good segue to bring them into this one. And also efficiency with a therapist, a PT, you know, a physical therapist can, once you create the therapy goal, you can give it to a tech to dispense the therapy to them. And then uh, return on your investment, 
uh, for therapists and for clinics too, because it's a very uh, portable and you know, uh, equipment that is very easy to use. Coming to patients, obviously, they're the ones who are benefiting the most out of all of this. You've seen increases in patient engagement because once you put them in the VR scenario, they kind of forget about the bias of the diagnosis. They're in a really totally different world. They're happier and then they're immersed and they're concentrated on the on the goal right now, the functional goal. And that kind of helps with encoding of the brain, helps with just like when you're learning something new, the more you're focused on it, the better you learn. And that way you're, you're learning to get back your limb function. And we've seen uh, patients are able to, uh, their training transfer from the virtual to the real world has been great because we have some patients who come back and I did a Facebook live today. We have one patient on there who came back and said he's able to pick up items from his pantry now and that he was not able to do it before using one of our games. So that's, it's really nice to know that there is like a, a training transfer for our patients. And then reduction in pain. If you have stress, anxiety, we have patients who come in with, you know, shoulder pain or anything. Being in VR, it kind of distracts you from the pain and as you're able to get through to your therapy. And obviously our kiddos, they love it. Uh, what our therapists do is use VR as like a train a reward system. So they can get through their one hour or whatever therapy, make them do it. Cause I thought it's hard to get therapy out of kids. Yeah. They get distracted <laughs> really quickly. They don't want to do it. It's, it's too bored. It's sometimes maybe too boring for them. But when you put them in VR, the one they're waiting for it and they know exactly what they want because they always <laughs> ask for what they want too. And one of our therapists was saying it's really hard to get like 10 to 20 squats out of a kid if you're making them, you know, do it and just without VR, but in VR, they just, it just happens. They just do it. And especially for our, our kids, a brain injury kids, they kind of have more tendency towards ADHD and they get distracted very quickly. Uh, it's good to have them focused on one task for you know periods of time. So these are just few of the benefits that we have seen with our patients and you know, also for therapists. Yeah, I mean, what, what I really loved is, so, so I actually did a demo with Vina's system, um, and what I really loved is how applicable it was. So it wasn't just like, we're going to do weights. She actually had like a cafeteria um, mm -hmm. like set up, and so there- Try to create everyday living scenarios. Yes, it was everyday living sc uh, scenarios, and, mm -hmm. and to me, I think like that's so powerful. We have a lot of OTs who can speak to this, how- how we have to train people in the exact environment that they're having their struggles, that they're having their, their deficits in. And that's really the only way that we can truly overcome those. And so that's what I loved. Like when I saw that, the, the kitchen and the cafeteria scene, I was like, this is so applicable. And I think too, like when it's like that, people like the patients actually feel like they're doing something too. It's not just like a right. game um, you know, the kids love the games, but you know, right. sometimes adults are like, I don't want childish. I want something that's going to be <laughs> applicable. But like, to me, what I loved is that I think with virtual reality, you can, you can escape your limitations. Like I work right. for the Fashions Affairs and, and I, 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 I discovered um, neural, neural rehab VR because I had a lot of patients who were just trapped in the wheelchair. And I was struggling with what other exercises could I do? And a lot of them are suffering depression, anxiety, right. boredom. Mm -hmm. And, and so I was like, what, how do I mix this up? Like they're tired of me doing the same old exercises. And so like, okay. we actually brought in um, a, a TV and we brought in like, I think it was an Xbox or PlayStation. One of the volunteers had it. And we brought it in and literally I couldn't get people out of the clinic. Right. Like all, all the veterans mm -hmm. just wanted to stay all day long and play this game. And I couldn't let them because it really wasn't functional because we didn't have a therapy game. But right. it was just something for some of our veterans who, who like just n didn't want to exercise, were bored, were over it. Right. This was really fun. And they were now coming to therapy. And I couldn't actually get them out. So it almost worked right. too good. But right. I think that's the thing is like, I think this would be a great tool for someone who you've done you know, 10 sessions and you're just stuck. You're at right. that point and try something new or try this. And I think that's going to just keep them motivated, keep them encouraged. And Exactly. 
and keep increasing their intensity too, right? Uh, so that they can get to their best optimal recovery point instead of, uh, especially when there's a mental barrier, when sometimes some patients know this is my limit and they kind of stop there. There's a mental barrier and you can get through that when you're in VR and your hands look like swords maybe or something else. And you, you don't have that reference point to what your limitation is. Yeah, you take that away. Yeah, there's, so true. There's a limit. So true. So true. Like, like someone won't want to, you know, move their left arm because they you are like, Oh, you know, I've had a stroke, but then you put them in the game and they almost forget. It's weird. It's, 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 it's like instinct like carries, carries over or something like that. I'm not sure, but. Yeah. I don't know the exact term, but we've seen that happen (laughs) so many times. We've seen where patients, we had a really older patient who was like 90 years old. Uh, He wanted his, his uh, son wanted him to try VR out, see if it, you know, to be helpful for him. He put on the headset. He was able to figure it out what to do on his own because we were trying to like tell him, like three people t- standing around telling him what to do, but he figured it out and he moved like way away from his midline. And his son said he's never seen him do that before, like bend over that much further in his wheelchair. And that was great for him to see. And we've seen patients like, you know, just blow through their limits uh, while they're in VR. And then, but a good thing is you can take a video and show them this is what you can actually do. Yeah. Oh. And, and you have all those sensors. Like, like one of my soapboxes is, you know, a lot, of, a lot of physical therapists, I don't quite think that we're as valued as like physicians because we don't have x-rays. We don't have MRIs. We don't have this technology that, that people really want. They want this like technology. But when you start bringing in things, like instead of just a band, you start bringing in, in virtual reality, this is right. something that's tangible and that includes the sensors and includes this like very specific outcome that's tracking so that you're finally bringing the technology in and bringing us up to like 2020 so that we can really right. like stand out and we can really show people our value. Exactly. And, and I, I feel like we've only scratched the surface as to what a product can be. And with the feedback and the more therapists use it, I'm sure you'll have more ideas and we'd love to get that feedback and add those features in and make it as perfect as possible. Yes, I know you're, you're, you're going to, you're going to grow and be amazing. And and I I probably can't even imagine what virtual reality is going to be like, like in 2025 or 2030, who knows, you'll be like flying wheelchairs or something. I mean, I'm sure by 2020, in 20 years, we'll probably, all of us will have AR glasses. We'll probably move to augmented reality. I, I yeah. see VR and also AR. I'm excited about augmented reality too. Okay. Do you want to talk, uh, you know, I don't know much about that. Is is that something that you're starting to look into to help treat in physical therapy and occupational therapy too? Yeah, more of a long term, but I like, I know, under, know the technology and I've always wanted to use it. So augmented reality is when you, you can see the real world, but you can add digital objects onto your real world. Kind of like Pokemon, though it's not uh, to <laughs> AR, <laughs> where you have the Pokemon in your environment. There's mixed reality where your digital object conform to the physical uh, space. So as in, if I bring a spaceman and put it on this desk, he will be on this desk and conform to that, you know, and then I can drop him to the ground maybe. I want to (laughs) or let him go to space so (laughs) with that I was thinking there'll be even better training transfer because we can do VR and then we can have a grocery store maybe an AR and also and then now you're more inclined to how it would look in the real world it's definitely something that we are thinking of exploring I just feel the hardware is not there yet yeah no I I can sense the complexity of that but I see where you're going is that it's it, it's virtual, but you're actually in a more real life situation mm-hmm. so that people maybe take it a little bit more seriously and it's even more, um, even more relatable to them. Exactly. Gotcha. And it's a good segue from VR to AR to real world. Amazing. Amazing. I'm looking forward to this. Um, now, I don't know if you know that much about billing, but I know we have some people that are maybe interested in adding this to their clinic or right. even maybe using this like could this be something also that someone could use on their own to create maybe like their own like virtual reality practice and start providing this to two individuals as like an entrepreneurial uh, business? Yeah. So right now uh, our model is B2B. So if you do have a clinic and you're or thinking of starting a clinic, it's a great uh, place to put VR in. 
We're in about eight different states now and rapidly expanding. So we're in a few different clinics across the U.S. Uh, what you would and it is and the therapy is being reimbursed by uh, insurance. So we can provide you the CPT codes to use and uh, what therapy uh, codes and what it used for and what are we can give you a little reference point to what the therapists have been billing for right now. So we can definitely do that. So we, and that was part of the thing is when you buy a product, you get the whole package. It's not just the, just the software. You get the software, you get the training, training videos and how our therapists, our previous therapists are using it and uh, what each specific therapy is used for. Like maybe upper XB training, you're working on your functional reaching, flexion, your abduction, your uh, range of motion, you can use purposeful coordination, maybe pattern matching. And then you have lower eximid. You can work on gait training, foot control, uh, your cadence, your you know, the distance you've traveled, and so we tell you everything. And that way, you're once you get our system, you have you know exactly what you would use it for, uh, and what each therapy would help the patient with. And awesome. also the therapy codes, yeah. Awesome, perfect. Now, is this anything that? What if you don't own a business? Do you think they could use your system or not yet? Not yet. We're definitely working towards that. Uh, it's mostly because, you know, regulations and everything we have to make sure uh, it will be compliant. And uh, when I, when we do have that, I can come back. And yes. Give more information probably. Everyone put in the comments that we want Vina to come back because I'm on a mission. My secret mission actually is to talk to all these companies and try to like inspire them to help a uh, solopreneur therapist and, and do this. So yes, I'm excited. I'm going to call you afterwards. Sure. <laughs> definitely (laughs) but that's great I mean I'm really looking forward to using this with my veterans I'm I'm just Mm -hmm. uh, I'm so happy that we're moving in this route and and I really feel like do you feel like COVID really opened up the doors more did you see a lot of like growth and maybe freedom in some regulations to use virtual reality more I'd be interested yeah like I've been following uh the regulations and CMS uh, updates. And I was really mad when PTs and OTs were not considered tel- teletherapy providers for a while. And I'm glad APTA and AOTA, they, you know, were really adamant about it and they opened it for PTs and OTs. So yay for everybody. <laughs> so that's great for us too. So that now we can think about, you know, providing uh, products for individuals that they can use with their patients. Uh, definitely working on that. So other than that, we did see a dip in March and April, I think, because that's something just when it hit people, they want to, they're just worried about their therapy and their clinics. Uh, but now, as soon as that kind of faded up, we've had a spike in the number of people who come to our website and are uh, buying a product. So that it's been great. And what everybody is looking for is one, an efficient way to do therapy, right? And uh, having good patient experience making sure you're collecting the data for uh, insurance reimbursement. I think we hit all of those spots really well. And, and we checked those lists. And that's one of the reasons for me taking off. Awesome. No, definitely. I think you're doing an amazing job. Now, I, I always forget to ask. Um, so I saw that it's for uh, physical therapy and occupational therapy, but I didn't see speech. Now, can, can a speech therapist use this? Or are you building out something for speech therapy too? We haven't built anything specific to speech therapy. And I that's kind of there in the, uh, I've been thinking about it because we have PTs, you know, we have PTs audio and the speech therapist in the clinic, uh, clinics that we go to. So it's there. I just have to like sit down with the speech therapist and ask what, what do they want from us? You know, what would they like to be built? And if oh, anybody awesome. here wants to talk to me. Well, definitely put in the comments. I mean, those of you interested in user interface, user experience, like we have, we have someone right here that we can directly influence. And so please, if, if you're a speech therapist and you've been wanting to do this, what would you like to see mm-hmm. you know, I- in this type of virtual reality system? Now, Thank can, you. <laughs> hey, we're, we are happy yeah. to help. We want to, you know, do as much as we can to help softwares and help systems because it's, it's about helping patients ultimately. And, right. and that's where we feel the most rewarded. So if I can have a system that is perfect for me to use and perfect for the patient, then I, I'm going to help you any day. That's exactly our goal. We want to help physical therapy as much as we can. I know how hard you guys work. <laughs> oh, thank you. Well, you're, you're working super hard. I mean, you're doing this and doing research at the same time. Is that correct? Oh, I did drop out of my PhD. Oh, no. no we'll edit that out. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> I did not finish it. It was uh, I w- at one point I was working on my PhD full time. I was teaching two classes and working on this full time. I I did nothing that year other than work. Oh. So I kind of dropped out of my PhD. Well, I think you're doing something very rewarding, and I you can always go back to to finish that you know research anytime. So, um, now, what about assistance? I think we touched upon it a little bit, but I know we have a lot of assistants in the group wondering. So so do how does how does virtual reality work in terms of like the system does a pt or ot need to evaluate with the virtual reality and then they can hand it off to assistants so i can tell you how it's been working till now so uh, the dpds or pts always do the evaluation they create the therapy plan and then the ptas can take over or or even the uh, once or the text if you know once the patient has used it a couple of times Uh, And that's kind of the model that's been working for in the clinics that we are at. So we, a lot of PTAs use uh, the VR with their patients. And then sometimes uh, when some of your patients want to do it for longer than 15, 20 minutes that they have. So that's when the techs come in and make sure that they're fine. uh, And there's some due to uh, around the patient. Awesome. That's kind of the model that's been working out. Okay, wonderful. No, I think that it's a typical like, you know, therapy evaluation, ovation Mm -hmm. model. Um, exactly. Right. Well, I'm running out of questions here. Let's see, everyone, it, those of you listening, please put in your com- p- Please put in the comments any questions you have for Vina. Um, anything else you want to share about about you know the journey to creating this business and about virtual reality? I guess this is a good time to talk about. Assistant. Yeah. Well. Well, okay. Vina has generously announced that she's going to be doing a giveaway with us. So I think, I think we'll go over the details separately and then we'll like post about that later. But, okay. but um, we will have a giveaway for You want to show them the headset though? Sure. Awesome. Hopefully my background. Is <laughs> she's got the take... Zoom virtual there you go. background. Perfect. So this headset, okay. we will be uh, running a giveaway for this, which is so, so generous. I mean, it makes, it makes me love neural rehab VR even more because, you know, all they care about is like helping patients and making sure that, that you can, you know, provide the best care possible. So we will be, everyone in the comments, if you're super excited for this giveaway, please put giveaway and put, we love Vina. <laughs> Thank well, you so much. I mean, <laughs> I, I mean, I love working in physical therapists and helping you. I mean, that, that's kind of my, this is what the company is for. <laughs> well, we have some wonderful questions here. Sure. Um, Melissa was asking, could this be used with someone with dementia? Yes. Uh, the, even though in our, the clinics that we've worked with, which has more, mostly been PTs and OTs, I don't think we've seen a lot of dementia patients, but, but I know other companies that have worked with dementia and it would work great because especially if you're triggering, trying to trigger memories for those patients or maybe take them to Rome or Paris that they had been maybe when they were younger or uh, on a honeymoon and then you're triggering those memories to come back and it's a really good tool for that. Yeah, definitely. I can see that. I mean, with people with dementia, providing pictures, providing music mm-hmm. that's, that's, you know, been in their past is so powerful to bring back those memories. So I could see that exactly. definitely being incorporated. Um, wonderful question. Melissa, uh, let us know if you have any other questions. Let's see here. Alvin says, hi. Um, hi. We got, we got lo- lots of people saying you are amazing. They love you. Very generous. Wonderful. So, oh, thank you guys. <laughs> But I think, I think Melissa brings up a really good question. What are some of the best use cases for virtual reality? We talked a little bit about um, pediatrics and autism and dementia, but any other like amazing use cases you've seen? Yeah, so we use it mostly with patients who've had a stroke, brain injury, spinal cord injury, and even Parkinson's and Alzheimer's too. So with, with our stroke patients, uh, if you know there's one side affected and you're trying to rebuild those muscles, rebuild those uh, neural pathways, it's perfect for that. And because it, they're using the concept of neuroplasticity. And then you can also work, make sure you're working on the affected arm. So our, our therapists do that sometimes, uh, especially in, in remember in the grocery shopping, you can choose which aisle side the items are on. So if, you, if, the le- if you're working on the affected left hand, you can make sure all the products are on the left side and you have no other choice than to use your left hand. So those are the, some things that our therapists do. And then uh, for spinal cord injury, they're working on, you know, it could be for neck movement. It could be, you know, working on their trunk and uh, balance and core control. So it works great for that. And for Parkinson's patients and some of our patients are kind of 
going towards the onset of Parkinson's, they have a lot of tremors in their hands. And we've seen it go down when they're using VR. So we have a couple of videos. We have one patient, while she's using VR, her tremors go down significantly. And it can st- there's a little bit of a tension after. Not really sure why that happens, but I guess she, her being focused on a task and being able to like actually coordinate her muscles uh, could be helping. Yeah, I saw that video. That was really powerful. And I was amazed. I was trying to think of still like the anatomy, how that would be. I mean, I think some things you just can't solve it. You just can't. Right. And that's why we're always looking for research collaborators, like tell us what's happening in the brain. (laughs) uh, When, uh, because we've seen a lot of changes, we've seen different things and we definitely want to do more research and figure out why and what's happening and how it's changing the brain. Amazing. Well, we maybe have some researchers out there. So if you are a researcher, put it below and we will try to connect you as well as speech therapists. Go ahead and put your comments below as to what you want to see in virtual reality. And I mean, you have the co-founder right here of this amazing software and of this amazing virtual reality headset. And so, um, Vina, I just want to thank you so much yes. for your time here. It's been, it's been amazing. Uh, any last um, words of wisdom for the group? No, really, thank you for having me. And I think all, I, I love physical therapists and you think really hard workers and creative people that, and I've been uh, fortunate enough to be working with them uh, oh. last couple of years. So keep doing what you're doing and we will have amazing ideas. So just if you have those and bring them to us and we'll try to do as much as we can to help you out and, Awesome. And, and, and if you're interested in, if you are a business, you're interested, you can go to Neural Rehab VR. Um, and then if they do, is there like the best contact? Should they just, is there a, an email that is uh, easy for them to, you can, uh, we don't want to flood your inbox, but. <laughs> you can email us at info at neurorehabvr.com. That's I-N-F-O info. You can also fill uh, the inquiry forms or the contact forms on our website. And we have a ton of, uh, resources too. We have videos, instructional videos as to how our therapists are using. We have a series of questions we ask one of our therapists and he's answering those like, uh, how is he using VR? What does he use it for? Uh, specific customizations. We have testimonials. And if you go to our research page, this is for therapists who are interested in research, we have categorized it according to you know, neuroplasticity or upper extremity training. So there's a wealth of information that if you would like to take a look at. Awesome. Amazing. Thank you so much, Vina, for being on your yes. generosity. We will um, shout out to uh, Neuro Rehab VR really soon and we will get together that giveaway. And um, it's just been a pleasure having you on. And everyone in the comments, please share your love. Thank her for her time. And we are so happy. And if you have any questions about this and want to maybe use it in your business, you can go to Neuro Rehab VR. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you for having me.